Welcome to part 3 of the way of effortlessness. Paradoxically, the objective can never be attained if it is thought of as a goal to achieve. This is because the stillness of mind that many people hope to attain is actually our natural state right here and now and not at some future destination. But this realization is veiled by the hypnosis that we have acquired from the external world. Enlightenment right here and now is the sage's axiom. A sage would ask us, how could we ever attain or achieve something that is already our true nature? This may look simple for sages to realize, but keep in mind that they were also once on a journey of self-discovery. They too had to undergo the process of thinning out their conditioned personality so that they could ultimately recognize that consciousness is naturally transparent and reflective like water. Water acts in the same way as mind. When water is disturbed, it is not transparent or reflective, as the waves and ripples obscure its essence. But when water is completely still, it is in its pure, true state of transparency and reflectivity. The nature of mind is stillness, which is beyond effort. Yet the waves and ripples of conditioning obscure this truth. Emptying your mind of these conditioned habits and latent tendencies, you come face to face, so to speak, with the Tao. The Tao of the Absolute is within our natural stillness, and this natural state is where spontaneity is effortlessly born. Stillness is where the virtue of Wu Wei is lived. If we come into contact with the still point of the Tao, then we begin to nourish the rest of existence through the art of living Wu Wei. Some of the greatest leaps for humankind will be taken when we face the dire dilemma that binds us to a mechanistic world. Drastic measures are needed to reorient our awareness back toward the natural world of the cosmic unfolding. From a sage's perspective, the answer to humanity's plight is not, how do we rid ourselves of these unnatural systems, but instead, how radical are we willing to be? Taoist teaching emphasizes that if we understand the spontaneous function and unfolding of the universe, Tao, then we will not fight this process. If we live effortlessly, with Wu Wei, the natural harmony of the cosmos will prevail. We cannot eradicate the established governmental apparatus by governing more. This was one of the major differences between Confucianism and Taoism. Confucian ideology built a strict system whereby one should govern one's life both within and without in accord with its philosophy. Lao Tzu, on the other hand, would have deemed this perspective absurd because the fundamental aspects of any external form of governance, control, force, and a search for power actually put one out of sync with the natural harmony of the universe. As a result, we feel as if we do not belong here. To govern is to control, and control is built from the experiences of the past and a plan for the future. Nature in all its glory is locked out, which is why a different system of government cannot be the way out for us. If we can be sincere in living Wu Wei, we will allow the course of Tao to run its path back into harmony through our own non-action in regard to the dilemma at hand. Revolutions and protests do not change anything because they are still reacting out of human conditioning and seeking to control life. To govern is to control, to control is to destroy life, and this is what needs to be reversed through the way of nature and Wu Wei. Human beings have the intelligence to comprehend the nature of Wu Wei. Yet many people do not have the knowledge of Wu Wei naturally, through their experience, unlike all other organisms, which would seem to jeopardize our claim to being the most intelligent species on this planet. To seek refuge from these unnatural systems, we need to understand nature itself. The organic pattern of the individual, Li, is our innate nature driven by T, virtue. Nature, then, has no relationship to force, control, or power. The order and pattern of nature is not a forced order, as nature is not bound by external influence or control. The Taoist term for nature is the Chinese Tzujian which means that which is spontaneously of itself. When a natural organism is in harmony with all life, it grows of itself spontaneously. Tzu Jan can only arise of itself without external compulsion. Tzu Jan is the essence of the yoking process found within the spiritual core of many religions, and especially in the origins of Chinese and Indian wisdom. When we withdraw from our conditioned perception of reality, we come back into nature and grow spontaneously in harmony with all other components of life. What would happen if we let go of control? When we leave the animal, plant, and mineral kingdoms alone, 
they continued to grow and prosper without any interference. What would happen, then, if we left people alone? From the perspective of traditional Taoism, if we left people alone to follow their own passions and interests, harmony would prevail within community, no matter how large or small. If there were no interference from the external world, people would follow their natures, because passive obedience would no longer be a way of life. We would no longer feel the need to obey unnatural organizational patterns, because in following our own nature we would begin to harmonize with other people and the environment. When we leave life alone, Tao runs its natural course, and all aspects of life come into order without seeking order. Superficially, this perspective may be incorrectly perceived as anarchy. But there is a major difference anarchist motives are driven by what they oppose. On the other hand, the sages who understand Sujin just follow their own nature without any concern for institutional or organizational power, because they are content to let such things run their course. An anarchist is still distracted by external influences. So if the world is thrown into anarchy, then the motive destroys the project. Nature is as it is and can have no motive, nor is it a project to embark upon. Tao can never be induced, as its principle happens spontaneously of itself. Su Jan. Anarchy is an attempt to induce Tao so as to bring about a real order through an intellectual, artificial decision to abandon the ways of society. Though anarchy in some sense is a step in the right direction, it is not a suitable method for liberating the world, because it cannot avoid having an agenda. The Russian evolutionary theorist Peter Kropotkin understood this subtle difference between anarchy and Sujan. Kropotkin postulated that if we were to leave people alone to follow their own nature, a real social order and true government would emerge out of the current system. His theory is almost a carbon copy of the Taoist Sujan. Its depth is equal to the thought of a sage. Yet his political theory was called anarchism, labeled Kropotkin's anarchy, so that many people could conveniently put it in a superficial context and believe they understood it. As radical as Kropotkin's theory may appear, it is this trust in people's nature that will bring about a true, harmonious government out of the ashes of a dying culture. This is in alignment with Lao Tzu's wisdom. The true government, according to the Taoist perspective, is the communal power that we attain when we trust one another sincerely to live our own lives without interference. This is the tea of the collective, or we could say social virtue, because true government is only realized when we have given up the power to govern. In giving away our power, we gain the sort of power that we truly want, which is beyond control. In the same way that we give our power of virtue away to get a real virtue beyond virtue, we give our power to govern away in order to get a real government beyond government. Life is governed when we leave the world alone to be what it will be. This is the paradox of life, although it confuses our linear, logical view. In the classical Taoist text left behind by Chuang Tzu, known simply as the Chuang Tzu, he profoundly articulates this teaching. I have heard of letting the world be, of leaving it alone. I have never heard of governing the world. You let it be for fear of corrupting the inborn nature of the world. You leave it alone for fear of distracting the virtue of the world. If the nature of the world is not corrupted, if the virtue of the world is not distracted, why should there be any governing of the world? Long ago, when the sage Yao governed the world, he made the world bright and gleeful. Men delighted in their nature, and there was no calmness anywhere. When the tyrant Qi governed the world, he made the world weary and vexed. Men found bitterness in their nature, and there was no contentment anywhere. To lack calmness, to lack contentment is to go against virtue, and there has never been anyone in the world who could go against virtue and survive for long. In going against our nature, Sujan, we not only destroy ourselves but we also contribute to the annihilation of the human race. The government we have created out of our insecurity and irresponsibility has to come to an end or we as a species will succumb to the fate that all parasites experience. The big question we need to ask is, how do we take steps to sincerely trust others and let them live life as they choose? If we can leave people alone, then the world will naturally heal its wounds and begin to grow in harmony with the Tao. But none of this is possible if we have not confirmed the reality of Tzu Jan within our own being. Even though the wisdom of Wu Wei and Su Jian have existed since the time of Lao Tzu, 
there has always been only a small minority who are sincere in bringing peace into their hearts and the hearts of others. Most humans, on the other hand, resemble a leader of a nation who parades around proclaiming peace through forcing war upon the world. Such insanity exists because individuals' versions of peace are built on their own agendas and attuned to their conditioning, which is incorrectly identified as pleasure. Many people will not admit this, because they are still identified with the seals and veils of conditioning. In such a state, we are like a tree that is continually pruned to grow straight and rigid. But our nature can never be straight and rigid, because we are eternally connected to the Tao, which is beyond name and form. Even the hypnotic feeling of straightness and rigidity arises out of the Tao, although temporarily, like a wave in an ocean. We can only leave people alone to live their own lives if we are sincere in our own introspection and willing to discard the conditioning that clouds our unity with our brothers and sisters. When we are sincerely humble and free from agendas, we nourish and secretly transform the world, again, through not seeking to transform it. A sage has no agenda, and this brings spiritual oxygen into the world. We all have undergone various sorts of conditioning and we all have the same physical and emotional states, so we can sympathize with the rest of the world, which suffers as a result of the same hypnosis as ours. On the other hand, if we are all inherently the same, we also possess the same qualities that a sage lives by. The I Ching demonstrates through a complex system of 64 hexagrams how a small piece of the puzzle can transform the whole system when that small piece allows for change, which puts it back in accord with the Tao. This is to be thought of psychologically, 